Greetings, brothers and sisters. So there has been a revelation from Will Smith's former assistant and friend named Brother Bilal. And I'll show you the clip in a second. But I want to give some context because the stuff he's saying isn't coming out of nowhere. And so Alexis Arquette is one of the famous Arquettes. There are four of them. Uh, Alexis Arquette is now dead died shortly after saying this thing here. I don't know if there's a connection or not, but just bringing that up. But Jada Pinkett Smith, who, you know, now reveals that she was, um, has been divorced in a sense from Will Smith for years and has shown over, uh, over and over again, she has complete disdain for him. Like she doesn't like him. And she um, said she was boycotting the Oscars because Will Smith didn't get nominated which now seems ridiculous as will smith calling her you know keep your keep my wife's name out of your mouth and calling her his wife when they had been really divorced for a number of years Uh, but when they did this alexis arquette came out and said this when jada comes out as gay and her beard husband admits his first marriage ended when she walked in on him servicing his sugar daddy benny medina then i will listen to them Will threw a fit on the set of Six Degrees of Separation. This is a movie where he played a gay character. When he was required by the scene to kiss Anthony Rapp, he persuaded the director to shoot the back of his head in the frame, blocking the non-existent lip lock entirely. F him. Gays have enemies. They lurk in gilded closets. Closets, Outing is healthy. You are either with, you are either with or against us. You decide today. And so this is Benny Medina. Benny Medina was the original Prince of Bel-Air. The character that Will Smith played was based in Benny Medina. You can see here he's got his shirt and his hand in Will's jacket here. Uh, Benny Medina is an openly gay man who uh, was sued for abusing some younger men. I forget the context. I don't know if they were teenagers or something, but he was kind of me too. And again, he was the, the character that, uh, again, he's a gay guy who he chose Will Smith. He wanted Will Smith to play him on the TV show that became the Prince of Bel-Air. And then this is Dwayne Martin. Now, there's lots of articles, and these are from a while ago, right? This has been going on. This was from seven, eight, ten years ago. $2 million cover-up scandal, Will Smith's secret payment to rumored gay lover exposed. And then um, this is them together. Lots of, you know, them uh, like touching each other. This is just one of the many, um, you know, pictures of them together. I think he was married to Tisha Campbell, who played on Martin Short's show. Maybe he was on that show. I don't know. Uh, He's an actor as well. Um, But there was rumors that, and they were best of buddies, and they were always hanging out together. Okay, I'm editing. I said Martin Short, and I meant Martin Lawrence. But uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. (laughs) <laughs> but there's lots of rumors of them being lovers is the important thing here. Tabloid hints Will Smith's affair with male actor destroyed marriage to Jada. And so these rumors were going around the man who came between them. So these rumors have been going on for a long time. Will Smith caught kissing Dwayne Martin. So this is Kevin Klein, who played um, co-starred with Will Smith in this the movie Wild Wild West a movie in which Will Smith had to do a belly dance and really work it and prostate before other male actors. And uh, he, I mean, there's all this stuff about A-list actors having to wear dresses. I've talked about this. I made a video about this years and years ago. Remember when um, Dave Chappelle came out and said only black, you know, black actors had to put on dresses. It was a whole thing in Hollywood. But I looked into it and then all these other uh, actors as well, not just black actors, but uh, all these other wh- white actors and other, you know, whatever it was, famous actors had to put on dresses. George Clooney, Brad Pitt, even John Wayne, right? It's sort of a rite of passage, and it's very prevalent in Hollywood. Will Smith had to do it for like five minutes, and he really had to work it. And this is what Kevin Klein said. We were all sitting in Will's trailer on the Wild and Wild West set. This was the font I I used to use, bloodthirsty. It was crazy, Will said. I'm secure with my manhood. Then he walked over Dwayne Martin and kissed him on the mouth. 
So this is the context of what we what we need to know going into this um, interview. Speculation. Damn. Somebody told me I made and my pictures in the book. You know, your, yeah, your pictures in the book and your name is in the book. So I'm just like, you're doing some real elegant pimp. I'm blowing you up. I love that. So there they are together. So this is his assistant. We know that they are, they have a relationship and, you know, there's multiple pictures with them together and this guy worked with famous people. I'm you up. This is what Jada makes the new people do. And I ain't going to say new. They probably been there after myself, mm -hmm. right? They will make you check into a rehab and they'll pay for the rehab. Even though you're not on drugs, they're going to pay for the rehab. And you have to go if you want to work with them. And then I've saw sexual acts that I. Kaboom. So think about that. They're not on drugs and they make people go to rehab. That's it's weird. And so I guess this interview is loaded with this stuff. I don't think the whole interview has come out yet. Maybe this is just a tease to it. Uh, but it's going around the internet. A number of people have sent this to me. So this is a legitimate guy. Like, you can't say that he didn't work for Will because we just saw Will Smith, you know, um, talking about putting him in his book. And, you know, there's pictures of them together. And so he might be lying about this. He might be, you know, using this as publicity. But we do know that there's these rumors that went around and, you know, and I'll show you my compilation after we get done with this, my short compilation. There's a longer one as well, right? Um, but then there's, you know, this part here. One I walked in on. Who'd you walk in on? Him and Dwayne Martin. Kaboom. <laughs> okay. Hollywood is the hurry up and, and, and wait game. So three minutes later after them telling me, hey, you got eyes on Will, you got, we, we, we need him to come watch this. So I'm running all over the, the, the studio. He's not in his dressing room. So he was, you know, whatever, his personal assistant, right? And they are looking at him to find Will Smith. And, you know, he's, on, he's not on the set. He's somewhere around the, you know, where they're filming. I go to the cafeteria. I'm like, well, but I see his car there. I'm like, where is this guy at? So now I'm holding Dwayne down too, so I have the keys to his dressing room. So I'm like, yo, and they're calling my, my they, I'm on walkie talkie and they're calling my cell phone. Yo, we need to get Will here. And I'm like, yo, kind of fucked down. Like I'm trying to find his, like this is, this. <laughs> so this makes the story more legitimate. This is unlike him, right? So all right, I open the um, door to Dwayne's dressing room and that's when I see Dwayne and having anal sex with Will. Kaboom. Let me process that for a second. <laughs> there was a couch and um, Will was bent over on the couch and Dwayne was standing up, killing him. Murder, like murder. It was murder in there. <laughs> he was murderizing Will's boop. <laughs> um, apparently Will's a bottom. Okay. What did you do? Even when I was... Um, so, I guess this maybe hasn't... Um, it's going to be on tonight at 8 p.m. And so I guess she's putting this out as a teaser. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's true or not because we don't know. He could be lying, but there's a lot of evidence to support what he's saying here. Let's go to my um, short compilation. Like, I have a long compilation that's an hour long and I made a, a recent video about this, and then there's this shorter one. Let's go to the shorter one here. Okay, so I don't have the short compilation. I'll play the long compilation after I'm done here. I'll say, you know, my ending, uh, the gratitude thing, and then after that, there'll be the compilation. Many of you have already seen it before. You can watch it again if you want. It's just a lot of evidence supporting this idea that Will Smith has been lying about his sexuality for years. Of course, they've been lying about their marriage and all these things, and you know, I started covering these guys in 2015. These guys, I mean, Tom Hanks, Will Smith, and Ellen. And they were the three people given the the nice guy, you know, the be kind lady, the nice guys, the likable guys. Overwhelming popularity. Will Smith had, and Tom Hanks both had like in the high 80 per, percentile of, you know, high 85, 88 positivity. Uh, you know, people felt positive about them in terms of celebrities. This is, you know, 2014 and 15. And I looked at Will Smith and Tom Hanks and, and Ellen. I said, they're not nice people, right? They're not these people that they, they're, you know, they're liars and fakers. 
And so I started making videos about them over the years, and the evidence was just a lot of evidence. Uh, whenever you looked into Will Smith, was about him having you know a gay relationship with this guy, and uh, you know being bisexual or gay. And this came from people in Hollywood. This came from Hollywood tabloids and people in Hollywood. And nobody talked about it recently. Like when Jada Smith and Will Smith, you know, she started that that Red Table talk and the affair came out. They weren't talking about this stuff that had been around forever, stuff that I'm just documenting here. And, you know, there's mannerisms that Will has and, and all the rest of these things. And so, you know, they're fraudulent people. We know they're frauds. And the fraud looks like it's pretty substantial. And they're still lying about this and covering it up. But this guy drops a bombshell. And this is an insider. This is a guy who worked with Will. And, you know, he's telling this story. He could be sued for slander, all these things. You know, he might have even signed a, a non-disclosure agreement. Or maybe, you know, they want him to say these things. So it finally comes out to the surface because maybe Will's tired of living this lie. Uh, but it's pretty, you know, it's pretty brutal. Anyways, here's the compilation if you haven't seen it already. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely born for the apocalypse. And the ascension, everyone have a blessed day and be grateful. Idea that Will Smith is not, you know, being honest about his sexual orientation. And there's, um, you know, the beginning of understanding their fraudulent marriage, which is the centerpiece to this whole tale. So let's get into that here. Thoroughly probed, got in there and got to the real stuff. Alex probed me. Sex, like once you've had sex, you know, you you, just, you walk different. It's in your back. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Only a man knows what a man needs. <laughs> you ever made love to a man? No. You want to? No, sir. Definitely don't look nerdy. You got you got some sexy vibes like, going. It's not nerdy. Like? And Aww. from that point, I never put profanity in my rap music. Oh, what a lovely story. Mm. That is sweet. <laughs> so this is what they found. <laughs> this guy's saying this is what they found in his colon. <laughs> yes. Don't say anus. So you let, you let some man put something up my anus while I was asleep. So basically. All right. So one of my viewers, um, let's go back a little bit here. So one of my viewers on Facebook sent me this. Oh, yeah. Behind you. Oh, yeah, man. Absolutely. Okay. It's and like then, good like, production. I see. And then we've it's got, like, can you, there's, hmm. there's some words up there. Yes. Okay, you all hey, say, hey. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So we'll just grab this, um, Graham Norton, is that his name? Graham something. And he has a, I think he's Irish or Scottish or something. He's got a, uh, you know, a celebrity talk show in the UK. In fact, I think in this very same episode, there is, um, something else. I'm going to play the compilation later. And that comes from this show. You'll see that in the compilation. <laughs> but, um, you know, Will Smith, let's go back here. So, um. He is in behind oh, yeah, you. Uh, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, okay. So he starts, this guy reaches down to bend over. And Will is eyeing his buttocks. And he decides, well. It's like good production. I see. And then we've got, can you, there's some words up there. Yes. Okay, you all say. I'm going to do that. He decides to do that back there. Big giant cursor nose, colossal cursor. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and then they have a good laugh. And so when I first posted this, I didn't watch the end of it. But then Helen Mirren gets in on the act. <laughs> and she stands in front of him and Will Smith puts his hands up in the air. Right. He puts up his hands. Because he wants no part of that. Graham, whatever his name is, Norton, is that it? You know, but Helen Mirren, he's not into it all. And so I'm back to narrating here. And um, then there's the weird Aladdin stuff, right? And this was referenced in various people critique of his, you know, his performance as Aladdin. Feels right. like some, oh, someone already did. <laughs> and that fake laugh. <laughs> 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 no, 
Now that will be edited out uh, of the show. No, <laughs> no it won't. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I love him, Ellen. I love him. I'm <laughs> 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 Trying to make out with his teenage son. I do. Ellen egging him on. No, you know, it's, it's, um, I think we, I mean, you know, when you have kids and you, you love them and you're proud of them, you just want to kiss them in their mouth sometimes. This one's going to be easy. Ooh, look at her hand. Oh, no, and she's going to get some punch. Feeling a little thirsty myself. No. No, 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 you can't leave me. They'll see right through me. No, they won't. All you have to do is walk over there. Speak. I also have to speak. Okay, listen to me. I live in a lamp. This is a party. Do not mess this up for me. Mr. Man, what's your name? Whatever, what would your pleasure be? Uh, that's fantastic. So do you think your parents are cool, or do they sometimes embarrass you, Jaden? My parents embarrass me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Will Smith laugh, right? <laughs> they do? I did not expect that answer. When I'm at school sometimes, my dad would just pull his pants down. Hey! <laughs> my to hug you. Can I hug you? Oh, my God. Adrian, how are you? Hey, hey, man. Come on, man. What the hell is your problem, buddy? So, um, you know, Will slapped that dude, too. <laughs> That dude kissed Will on his mouth. It's something the guy does. He's some reporter in Europe, some, you know, gossip reporter. And Will slapped him because he didn't like being kissed on the mouth the same way he kisses his sons on the mouth, which was interesting. And then I have a long compilation here of, you know, things that I've read before, stuff from Alexis Arquette and stuff about Benny Medina. So let's watch that. Even now, he's trying to get real, and he's still fake. Like, he doesn't know how not to be fake. But mentally, I was somewhere else. I'm done. And I ended up discovering a whole lot of hidden things about myself. Okay, so are you finally coming out as gay? Because the biggest thing about Will Smith, and it's been, you know, rumored by Hollywood. This is something that I didn't figure out. Like, Hollywood had been talking about this for years. Alexis Arquette was from the famous Arquette family. There's like five of them, and they're all like celebrities. Um, and it says, Alexis Arquette drops Will Smith gay bombshell. This is from Pink News. Trans actress brands Will and Jada Pinkett Smith gay hypocrites following Oscar boycott. And so um, Jada Pinkett Smith boycotted the Oscars because Will wasn't nominated or something. Remember that? And Alexis Arquette said this, when Jada comes out as gay and her beard husband admits his first marriage ended when she walked in on him, servicing his sugar daddy, Benny Medina, then I will listen to them. And then it said, she's being his first wife paid off and silent. Will threw a fit on the set of Six Degrees of Separation when he was required by the scene to kiss Anthony Rapp. Anthony Rapp later would accuse um, Kevin Spacey of abusing him in some way. So that's all tied together. He persuaded the director to shoot the back of his head in the frame, blocking the non-existent lip lock entirely. Him, gays have enemies. They lurk inside gilded closets. Closets, Outing is healthy and you are either with or against us, you decide today. So then um, Alexis Arquette was clearly upset by the Smiths playing this role of the perfect couple and, you know, Will pretending to be cisgender or whatever they, they call it, right, and wasn't having any of it. And then Alexis Arquette ends up dying, right, shortly thereafter, which seems suspicious given what happened here for like almost like a punishment for outing Will Smith. So Will Smith, this is Benny Medina, right? And Betty Medina was the, the real fresh parents of Bel Air and salvaged Will Smith's career. Here's Betty Medina with his hand inside Will Smith's shirt. And so Betty Medina had this idea for a TV show, and it was about his life because he had some sort of fresh prince of Bel Air type of situation. And he 
got Will Smith to star in it, right? Will Smith was an actor. He didn't want to do it or whatever. And so Alexis Arquette said that um, Will Smith was servicing Benny Medina because of, you know, whatever was going on there. So that was the first accusation. So like I was saying before, I've covered this subject, Will Smith, not just this, so many different celebrities, so many different, I mean, just, you know, things that stories disappear and they have no use. But I've covered this before, and then it comes back around again. There's been three times I think I've made a chunk of videos, like three, four, five videos, in a, you know, within like a six-month period or a week, you know, a couple of weeks period because something happens with that celebrity, and then I already know all these things. And so now I'll have it all together. All this Will stuff, Will Smith stuff will be in one video, and it'll, I can slap it on the end of a video if something again, you know when they cancel them or whatever, you know, it'll just be there and people who haven't seen it will get to see it then. And otherwise it'll be, you know, something I can reference from or clip, you know, take clips out of or whatever. Um, but anyways, there's another segment on uh, Benny Medina here. Will Smith talks about Benny Medina himself. And so let's watch this here. So the problem with this is this is Benny Medina. And I've covered this before. I've covered the quote that um, came from came from Alexis Arquette. I've read the quote where Alexis Arquette talked about how Will Smith's first wife walked in on him. He was servicing Benny Medina. Here they are together. Here they are here. Benny Medina has his hand in Will, Shirts, Will Smith's coat. And there they are, right, doing a little bit of piggyback ride. You know, all gangster stuff. I mean, look at a gangster. This is some gangster hand-touching here hand-touching here, hand-touching. You know, Will Smith wants to portray himself as some tough guy from Philly, right? That's his, you know, what he's built his brand on. But Benny Medina, the guy who was the real-life Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So he's the guy who pitched his life story. Me and Jeff had come out with our smash hit. Parents just don't understand. We made a bunch. So this is... So Benny walks me in. And introduced me to Quincy. And like, hey, Q, what's up, man? He's like, hey, man. Wait, is that Q? He met Q. <laughs> hey, QBs, Will Smith knows where Q. What's up, Q? Yes. I Let It Rip is probably the best description of Will, for, Will Smith's acting performance <laughs> on the French Fresh Pit Prince of Bel. All right, so we've established that Benny Medina, this guy who's getting handsy with Will Smith, is the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, right? He's the real life. This is who the story is based on. There was no Fresh Prince. He had, he had this life-changing event where he went from Watts in California, not a great, um, you know, neighborhood, and then went to the, you know, the rich neighborhood of Bel-Air, and then he came up with an idea for a show, brought it to Quincy Jones, and they cast Will Smith in the part. And so Benny Medina was also someone in 2004 who was, um, he, uh, he, I guess he was music manager of Jennifer Lopez, and he was um, accused of a sexual assault on a, I believe, a young man, like a 15-year-old kid or something like this, right? In November, actor Jason Dotley alleged that Medina tried to R him in 2008. So I don't know if he was an adult or not, um, but there was this, you know, this sexual assault allegations and Benny Medina is a gay man. And so the character, the concept of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is about a gay man who went to live with his uncle in Bel-Air. Will Smith, of course, he has had many rumors from people in Hollywood that he's at least bisexual. So there's been a development. It's now like two or three days since I completed this um, compilation. And I um, made it public yesterday on YouTube. And that very same day, two of my viewers uh, sent something to me. One was a comment about how Will Smith had mocked gay people on the Arsenio Hall show. And then did a fake apology. I'll show you that clip coming up. And then another one of my viewers sent me 
a um, uh, like a interview with Benny Benita's sister, and she talks about Will Smith that she believes in her gut that he's gay. This is years and years ago, and then this clip resurfaced from Jada and um, Will Smith. This is sort of a segue because I'm going to get into the Jada stuff in just a bit. It's an exchange where Will Smith says he wants to own his social media presence, and he's being kind of a a douche to her, and just it kind of it kind of um, you know captures their relationship. And then there's going to be a third clip or for a fourth clip that I'm going to put in here. It's something I forgot. So you know I got this thing done, I put it up on the internet, on my YouTube channel, and then already there's more stuff, right? But I forgot to include something where Will Smith um, says over and over in a rap song that, you know, we stole his kids. Um, you know, he, he um, you know, Jaden had this hit rap song called Icon, and Will Smith, you know, because he has to be the center of everything, muscled in on it. And then he has a line where he talks about how he needed tequila to uh, procreate to have a baby with Jada, right? <laughs> and I, you know, joke that the tequila is uh, Viagra, but also, um, well, you'll see that coming up. And he say he tells a story at Jaden's uh, birthday party, and it's just so he's just so weird, right? So um, inauthentic. So let me show the three clips from my video I made yesterday, and then I'll add the tequila thing after that. Carol is coming to the table. She's going to be at the red table. Would you say she has been instrumental in you and I redefining our relationship? I would say, don't just start filming me without asking me oh my goodness. if you could film Astaire, me. Astaire, come help us again, please. I'm still dealing with foolishness. Don't. No, no, she, yeah, because she. See, um, you know, I can understand not wanting to be filmed if you're not ready for it. Like, that's a, you know, natural response. But he has his whole, whole social media, uh, his YouTube channel more than anything else that he's done. And he films his family all the time and then controls the edits, controls the narratives, right? He's a control freak, right? And he is controlling, you know, his social media. And then when his wife turns the tables, because she's a part of um, some of his videos on YouTube, the family's a big part of it. And it's, you know, he wants certain narratives about his family that are fake. He's already come out later and talked about how he's, a, you know, carefully created brand, right? You talked about that, you know, kind of admitting it, but then not really owning it, right? And so, you know, this is him, this controlling and uh, unfair person, right? Because he expects something different, you know, different treatment for himself than he gives to his family, right? She don't just... Would you say that she helped us heal the hurts that we caused between one another? My social media presence is my bread and butter. Okay, so you can't just use me for social media and not, you know, don't just start. Roll. I'm standing in my house. <laughs> and so um, that's what he's done with his whole family and then all the other people in his life. Right. Using them all so he can create the narrative that he wants about himself. Right. And, you know, <laughs> and how controlling he is. And this is their relationship. Of course, she wants to do the same thing. She has the whole red table talk thing, which she, you know, didn't appear on forever, but then it became really successful and got a lot of views. So he shows up and it's a whole thing. Right. And, you know, they're both controlling and narcissistic and all of it. You know, they're fake brands and pretending to be something that they're not. Don't just start rolling. Don't Please start. watch a stare at the red table because she's helped us a lot. Can't you tell? What are the alternatives of divorce? And so um, this is the person, right? But their marriage sucks. <laughs> divorce. Everybody thinks that as soon as you find out there's an affair, you got to get a divorce. I am not of that persuasion right. because I think that there are many relational betrayals. Yep. Contempt yes. and neglect yep. and violence yep. and indifference and nobody tells people get leave, a divorce, leave, right. get mm -hmm. the hell out, get the hell out, and especially. 
And so um, she's talking about that because of what later happened, you know. ...on women. It's the yeah. real new pressure. God forbid you still would love the person who actually, you know, cheated on mm -hmm. you. Maybe that person is a lot of things and cheated on See, you. See, that's real talk. It's like the shame of... That's real talk. ...staying, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Now that you can go, you got to get out. Right. I so relate to that because, you know, I'm asked a lot about... Because <laughs> you were banging one of your son's friends. And Will was banging his buddy, <laughs> Yeah, you do. You do relate to that, Jada. Is there infidelity in your relationship with Will? And it's like, no. But there have been other betrayals right. of the heart that have been far bigger right, right. than I could even think in regards to an infidelity situation. Of course, she's lying here because, you know, I mean, it wasn't infidelity because they were open in their marriage, right? And so it would be infidelity if they had a real marriage. <laughs> And it just shows you how fake they are. I have this whole thing, like I said, I've made a compilation and um, I'll get to that later. But, you know, this is a good example of how fake they are. They're just like this creation. And when you see what they really are like, and most people, I you know, I guess can't, at least they're fans. It's like, oh, why are these people famous? Why are people watching them? They're just miserable, horrible, narcissistic people that name their kids after themselves, right? So one of my viewers left a comment about some things that um, Will Smith said on Arsenio Hall about stuff that needs to now find its way into my compilation. I'm going to have to add this to the compilation I put up today. Um, but this, First of all, he does this thing where he imitates Michael Jackson. You can say anything you want, man, because you're large. I could, oh! <laughs> Like Michael Jackson, right? Can I say? Wee, <laughs> <laughs> that sucked. Wee. So then there was this. There, there's no real body frame, you know. Mm -hmm. I like, I like my women, you know, a little, a little thick, thick. Yeah, that's good. Oh, you must be my women, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but. No. JD ain't thick. <laughs> So what the person left a comment, though, was that Will Smith and in Ar in Arsenio Hall used to mock gay people and act gay, right? Given how everything has changed and just, you know, what recently Will Smith, the whole slap debacle and everything we know about their fraudulent marriage. And, you know, they're doing it in a way that would cancel them now, right? What, what they're doing back then would cancel them now. And, you know, I mean, Will Smith and some of these guys have avoided all this stuff. Will Smith is already in the process of being canceled. And he referenced it and he apologized for it. I'll show you that clip in a moment. Um, but he had done it on some previous episodes. He seems to be doing it here. This is Jazzy Jeff, his partner. Passing of the torch. Bringing the oh. sound to Philadelphia from the 70s into the 90s. Yeah. Oh, my man, I like you, like you said, passing of the torch. Passing. It made it sound good, like like not like he was burning you, but it was just, yeah, a, just grabbed it was a, you grabbed it. I'm I'm, I'm gonna go back to my brother. There you go. I should, yeah. I should try to say something way. funny if I'm gonna be taking all that time on TV, right? That <laughs> yeah, that was strange. The other thing is Arsenio Hall tries to get Jazzy Jeff involved and asks him some questions, like he's not the big star, but he's trying to include him, and Will Smith constantly is answering for him and cutting him off, right? Like, you know, like Will Smith's got to give her every minute of attention here. And so it's just, I mean, we know that from everything else we've seen it from Will Smith. He's always got to be the center of attention. And some people don't understand, like, like you and I were, like, playing characters. We always do that. Oh, yeah, play, oh, yeah, yeah. We That's another street, thing we got to You know, play, play B-boys. And yeah. then one time we was playing these two gay guys. Just fooling yeah. around just here. Just messing around, you know, doing... And we were apologizing to each other for things that we had done to each yeah, other. Yeah, just playing. We, we were just playing, right? And then they were just playing, right? You know, I watched a number of these videos. Someone left a comment and said that this happened. Now, I couldn't find the original video where they were doing this, um, but here he's going to do it again in a second. Will Smith is. Um, but this was stuff that would get you canceled. But the show was so bad. Will Smith's a horrible guest, and I forgot about how bad the Arsenio Hall show sucked. And then, 
I start getting all these mail from the, the gay activists and stuff like that. They, they was telling me, you know, you always talking about gay people and you know all this. And I was like, it's just a joke, you know. And I, I just want to apologize to any of those, any of the gays that were offended. Can you know? And so here it comes. Um, but you know, we now know that the gay community and the Hollywood community have long since believed that Will Smith is closeted, right? And there's been all the, you know, I've covered this in my compilation video. I'll add this to it as well. Um, but if you think about that, right, and, you know, how he's being here. Because I, I was just joking, really, from the bottom of my heart. I want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> See, that would get you canceled today. Now, he's already, because of the Chris Rock thing, you know, which I believe to be fake, but he's on the verge of being canceled already. And he's, you know, kind of being canceled. And this thing, if you're going back into people's pasts and digging up old tweets and interviews, and right here, Will Smith is um, clearly doing something that should be he should be canceled for. And there's all this evidence supporting that he's covering up his own sexual orientation so it's just you know bizarre right so literally as soon as i found that so i read a comment and i found that thing i just showed you of will smith mocking gay people and all of that implies right there's so much to unpack there and right after i was done with that well, I checked my Instagram. Someone sent me a message with a link to this video. So um, the woman's Benny Medina's sister, and she's dying from cancer, and this is her son. And Benny Medina, who was the real French Prince of Bel-Air, right? The this, this show was based in, you know, the show was based in his life. And Alexis Arcad, of course, accused Will Smith of being, uh, servicing his Sugar Daddy Benny Medina, I showed you all the pictures, right? That's all, you know, been documented. And I guess that Benny Medina was intr instrumental in helping Puff Daddy as well. And so um, this woman's going to, the interviewer's going to ask her about the rumors about Will Smith being gay. What do you guys say to the rumors that Will Smith may have a questionable sexuality? Uh... I you don't know, but you agree. I'm not sure, but I will tell you this. I have a gut feeling and my gut don't lie. Mm hmm That he is gay. Mm hmm That Jada Pinkett is bisexual. Mm hmm That all that situation was just for the people. That his heart was never into being with a female. Okay, so I got a bunch more stuff to get to here. <laughs> I'm going to add this um, first and then a few more articles and things to get to another video. Will Smith is an absolute mess, and you can see how insecure he was on the Arsenio Hall show. He's fake, he's acting, he's, you know, posturing, he's posing, he always does this. You know, him snapping at his wife and saying he wants to control his image. Because in a world of internet branding, like this is something everybody does now on Instagram and Facebook, people want to present themselves in a certain way, Right. And, you know, you have a work self and you have a, you know, a social self and, you know, you're one way with some friends and other way with other friends. And, you know, people are showing so many different faces to so many different people. It's like when it all comes together and then somehow you're defined by some small, you know, incident or thing that you did, you know, like in this case, a slap or, you know, you screw up on the Internet and somebody tapes it and puts it up there or you have some moment where everybody, you know, thinks about you in some, you know, like crying at a, a rainbow type of a way, right? <laughs> where all of a sudden, you know, you're defined to the world in this, um, you know, way that's totally unacceptable, right? Everyone's trying to control their narrative. Of course, corporations do this, politicians. I mean, it's just everybody. It's just a world of lies and spin and hype and all these things. And when your inside and your outside don't match up, this is one of the great things, teachings of the heartfulness system, is to be what you are on the outside, what you are on the inside. Because when you start faking things, 
and pretending to be something on the outside that you're not in the inside and you keep on, you know, presenting this, um, this mask, this persona, this false face and, you know, multiple faces. And then you start to fragment on the inside, right? Because, you know, you're playing all these parts and, you know, faking all this stuff and eventually it just falls apart. And Will Smith, you can see the guy, I mean, like he's just got so much deception going on. I mean, a world of deception, like I said, in the Hollywood um, <laughs> town where deception and being fake is the norm, Will Smith is the king, right? Whew, damn. So even when he's sort of having a revelatory moment, he sucks, right? Like everything about him sucks and everything about him is fake. Like he's so, you know, he's not a, like a real creation. Like he just, like, you know, like all these actors and Hollywood people, they're always morphing themselves to pretend to be something else. Like that character he played when he was on Arsenio. They're just fakers. All they do is ever is fake and try to be something that they're not, right? Externally, and then they don't develop anything internally. So even when he's, you know, having this moment, this, you know, this moment here in this trailer to promote a, another crappy, you know, internet show that he's on, he's fake, right? And on top of that, he's got sort of a dominant personality. Like he appears to be funny and, you know, like uh, easygoing and all these things. But there's been weird stuff for years. Like he really likes to make out with his sons. Multiple times you can see he kissed his sons, his sons on the mouth. Something his teenage son was running away from. We'll show the Ellen clip. This is his other son from his first marriage. And he's forcing the kid. Kid's squirming. Doesn't want to be with him. He doesn't want him to kiss him, but he, he does it anyway, right? He's constantly doing that. He likes to kiss his kids on the mouth. He talks about it in, you know, various places, including here. And I understand that you purposely try to embarrass Jaden as much as possible when you're there. I, I, I wouldn't say, does it fit? I mean, maybe. Just look, just take a and not that, it's a way of controlling and being dominant. It's like he's mounting... You know, he's he's very much got to be the dominant. You see this when he had a birthday party on his YouTube channel. It always has to be the center of attention. Watch Jada's face when Will's having his birthday party. Or maybe it's maybe it's somebody else's birthday party. But either way, I think it was his daughter Willow's birthday party. So here he is. Um, it was Jaden's birthday party. He also celebrated um, Willow's. And, you know, other his, like, they, they were just, his was bigger than the rest, right? Um, but this is his YouTube channel. And 80% of this thing is him and him talking, right? And so, um, you know, I was covering his YouTube channel quite a bit when it first came out because they promoted the crap out of it. And, you know, like, you didn't have a, you weren't, you weren't pushed out by a popular media, but you had to invade, um, social media like it goes against everything that to me what's great about youtube and social media is that you know celebrities are you know they have their place and cnn has the, its place but then they realized they had to get you know into it as well right and he did it in will smith typical will smith fashion but here he is drunk but he's always really loud right he's always yelling and you know in sort of a appears to be a, a jovial jovial mood and so it's disarming, but it's, you know, crazy, right? This is somebody who has to always be the center of attention. And whenever you see him, he's always, you know, he's the center. Like he's always got to make himself the center of it. You know, he, he wants to talk about the conception. Look at her. You know, he um, he has a verse on, on Jaden's icon. Jaden had a hip, hit rap song called Icon. And Will had to sponge in on it. Like, he couldn't let his son just have his own moment, right? So he wrote a rap, and he talked about conceiving the children. And he said tequila, like he needed tequila. And I'm like, you, I think you mean Viagra. Like, you know, <laughs> that to, to conceive children with his wife, he needed tequila. Like, <laughs> So this is Will Smith's video. It says, I could not re resist... This track is ridiculous. Congratulations, Jaden. So Jaden had his own hit rap song. You know, imagine 
any other celebrity, you know, or any kid, and they have some success, and their parent who has success in the same thing has to show up and, you know, make themselves the center of attention, right? Like, this sums up Will Smith in every possible way. You was born from an icon living. You was born from an icon living. That's the, you know, the sort of the, the hook on his song. Messed around, married me, an icon living. He messed around and married him an icon living. And then what happened? Tequila. Then we made some icon children. <laughs> Tequila. And then we made some icon children. This is his son from a previous marriage, but he still makes out with this guy, too. You know, this happens. We all know this dude. And Jaden, he's got some kind of weird Jesus thing going on. But Will is basically saying he couldn't have banged his wife without tequila or Viagra, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever tequila is a code word for, right? <laughs> you know, artificial insemination. You know. <laughs> you know, they've told that story a number of times. Like, he's proud of it. Talks about it all the time, right? You know. <laughs> and so... um Hey, son, you weren't conceived in love. Uh, you know, I had to be drunk to, to bang your mom, but she's cold. Can we freaking cut his cake? Do you got to you gotta do it? You got to suck up more attention, right? Like you haven't had enough attention as a fake, you know, horrible rapper and a, a bad actor. You got to suck up more energy, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm really proud of you. Um... Okay, so, you know, but this whole thing, if you go through the beginning, there, there he is. There he is here talking to Jaden, you know, here. It's all him, right? It's Jaden's birthday thing, some kind of thing he's doing. Here he is over here. I'm just flipping through it. Here he is again. There's some kind of present. He's Here he is. He's just here all everywhere. He's yelling at these guys to come over. Down well and his, you know, like he's constantly needs attention. He's always loud. You know, the loud and the laughter and the fake laughter and, you know, his, like, insecurities, like, like they dominate his interactions, right? Like he's just louder than anybody else and whatever's going on. And he's just, you know, controlling and sucky and he's, you know, Will Smith. So this is um, from the Red Table Talk and I saw this. I saw this, you know, um, years ago and I should have remembered. I don't want to say should, but I usually remember stuff like this because um, Will Smith was on the Red Table a couple of times. And the first time, it had been like years um, since she started it. And all her family members had been on the show, right? <laughs> Except for Will. And um, she was now very successful. She was getting lots of views. And so he shows up, and they're talking about, this is before the August Cena thing. And Will talks about 90% of the time, which is hard to believe given these three women <laughs> on the on the red table but he dominates like he always does center of attention and he does all the talking and so you know there's this moment where jada is saying that she knew she got pregnant immediately after having relations with will you know the this goes with the whole tequila thing you know i'm going to add this to the compilation so you might be hearing this in the compilation because it goes with the whole tequila thing um but they went down to some place in Mexico. I believe they were on vacation and they had tequila and Will Smith was able to perform his boyfriendly like duties. And Jada immediately knew she was pregnant and started to cry. Right? I was like, I was like, babe, I, th I think scientifically you're not pregnant. So she says she's pregnant and Will Smith immediately tells her she's wrong. <laughs> she turned out to be right. Um. <laughs> I cried that whole night. Damn. She cried all night I because she was pregnant. All night and long. She knew I was like. That she was going to be tied to me for the next 18 years at least. <laughs> she like hates him. Like, you know, and he has um, very like hurtful expressions. Like, you know, um, see, the thing about Will Smith is. He talks so much and he's so up all the time. It's a way to cover up, you know, when people don't have the ability to be silent and be calm, 
and go inward because they're avoiding something that's inside of them, right? This guy's the epitome of that, right? Maybe he was abused. Maybe there's whatever it is. There's things inside of him he doesn't want to confront and, you know, it's like, uh, people fill their lives, their waking hours with so much stuff because they don't have to, they don't have, you know, they don't want to, they're distracting themselves from facing something, some demon inside of them, right? My life is My never going to be the same. Gonna be the same. Yeah. Damn. I thought it was funny. Uh, yeah, of he course thought it you was would hilarious. think it was funny. They all hate him, right? Willow hates him so much she rolled out her demon eyes. <laughs> He just stole it. <laughs> I was like, what am I going to do now? Yeah. yeah. I really didn't want to get married, but... We only got married because Gammy was crying. Yeah, and how did that work out for you, right? You shouldn't listen to Gammy's tears. <laughs> the lesson to be learned here, children, is don't listen to Gammy's tears. Gammy, you know, she's not on the right side of things because... <laughs> This beard mirror marriage didn't work out because of Gabby's tears. <laughs> when I, it was almost as if Gammy was like, you have to get married. So let's talk about the wedding. Look, <laughs> look at these expressions. Gammy's like, don't pin this shit on me. Don't play me. <laughs> don't play me for this demon marriage. It was almost like that. and Like and she completely just was like, that's yeah, not a reality where you're I not married. I was under so much pressure, you know, being a young actress, being yeah. young. And, and I was just and like, pregnant. pregnant. And I just, I was just like, I didn't know what to do. But I just knew, I was like, I never wanted to be married. You know, this whole family, I mean, the whole thing's a disaster. They were a disaster long before I started covering them. And they were a disaster long before this infamous fake slap thing happened, right? Will Smith has been, you know, somebody who's just uh, like, a, you know, a, not a, a functioning person, right? Somebody who has deep psychological issues and, you know, just somehow became famous, right? Avoiding his, you know, inner demons. I mean, like so many, like Alec Baldwin, he talks about his inner demons, right? I mean, I think actors and actresses in general are like, they hate themselves, so they have to play other people. Like they have to you know, they create brands and they're always faking and manipulating and, you know, doing anything to avoid what's inside of them, right? This is what I talk about in terms of the heartfulness meditation I do. You know, you have your inner who you are inside. And that's been negated in our modern day civilization, that people don't look inside and see what kind of person they are. And most people, when they do, they're bummed out. Like when they, you know, they realize, you know, what's inside of them, you know, the stuff I mean, and they're scared of the divinity, too. So it's two things, right? People are scared of their demons, but they're even more scared of their divinity. You know? And so um, Will Smith and his, his nightmare of a family, and they forced it on everybody for years, right? It became a part of the Hollywood culture and the, you know, American culture. And then they have this stupid show, all these things. And now it's like, you know, it's blown up like a, you know, a big, mess right it's blown up like some you know just crap fest that exploded on everybody <laughs> and you know people are just coming to terms with the fact that these were unhappy people who you know it's just like every other celebrity when you get to the bottom line success doesn't make them happy and Jaden's just like J uh, Jada Smith's just like over them like she just can't stand them you can see her expressions like the expression she gave Chris Rock she gives for Will Smith all the time Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I love him, Ellen. I love him. I mean, <laughs> and so, you know, it's a weird thing he's doing here. <laughs> Ellen's encouraging this, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, well. When you have kids and you, you love them and you're proud of them, you just want to kiss them in their mouth sometimes. <laughs> So then the, the audience is cheering this. You know, this is like, this is way worse than slapping Chris Rock, kissing his son on the mouth. And, you know, the kid, I mean, saying no to him and squirming away. A lot. A lot. It happens quite, quite a, a bit. Yeah. It happens a lot. Like, you know, this is sexual abuse and just weird dominating stuff. Yes. 
He's got him in a headlock. Do you feel love or do you feel assaulted? He's very dominant like this. He's also he's often, you know, he's just messed up psychologically. He's a messed up dude. Like he's effed up. And, you know, has been for years. And he's, you know, he's been managed and handled. And, you know, he's an actor. I mean, they're just a faker and they just fake everything. But they're always just this close to, you know, flip it out. So some of this stuff might get repetitive, but, um, you know, I covered this in various videos. And there's different points in different videos. And I thought, you know, to be comprehensive, I might have to cover the same thing. I think I have the, the stuff with his making out with his sons again here somewhere. Um, and the compilation now is, you know, getting bigger. So, um, but each one has a different, you know, take on that, right? More information. So I'm leaving it in here because, again, this is a comprehensive <laughs> video of all this stuff I've done over the years and covered. But I also want to say that Jaden, uh, Jada talked about her sexual addiction on the Red Table Talk, that she was addicted to sex, right? And when you're a married person, you know, if you need tequila. Like Will Smith has said this in, in even other places about the tequila in terms of impregnating his wife, right? The tequila. And, you know, if you're going to, I mean, this idea of being um, conceiving in love, which is an important aspect of the cardfulness meditation, right? When a baby is conceived and there's love there in the conception and the relationship between the mom and the dad, you know, God is present. Then it's a complete different um, birth for the kid. It sets the kid up in a different way for their life, having love be there at the, be there at the beginning of the conception period, right? But if Jada was addicted to sex, and when you're a married person, you should need alcohol to be intimate with your with your spouse, right? You're going to have times over your life, and hopefully, you know, the majority of the interactions are going to be free from alcohol. But the fact that he keeps on bringing up the alcohol as being like a significant factor in the conception of his children, you know, because he not only talked about Jaden, he said, you know, we had tequila and we conceived some icon children. So he, he's also referencing Willow. Um, and, you know, Jada was somebody who was a sex addict. So <laughs> you do the math there. But anyway, so I needed to add these uh, four things. Um, because, you know, now it's more complete. I mean, there's a few things I'm sure I'm missing from one video or another. Like I just watched this and I was like, oh, I forgot about all this stuff. Uh, but anyways, let's get back to the original video here. Then there was this tabloid hits Will Smith's affair with male actor destroyed marriage to Jada. $2 million cover-up scandal, Will Smith's secret payment to rumored gay lover exposed. And then he was in this movie um, with Kevin, uh, Kevin Klein called um, uh, Wild West. It was a remake of the Wild West TV show. Will caught kissing Dwayne Martin. We were all sitting in Will's trailer on the Wild Wild West set. It was crazy. Will said, I'm, I'm secure with my manhood. Then he walked over to Dwayne Martin and kissed him on the mouth. That was Kevin Klein, who was at the time an A-list actor himself. And he was recalling this. And so these guys were rumored to be a couple. And so Will Smith was carrying this sham marriage out. I mean, based in Hollywood insiders. And in reality, he was, um, was really gay or bisexual. He was you know, somebody on the LBGTQ spectrum. And, um, you know, there was just so, some fakeness about Will Smith. And then in the Wild Wild West, there was things that happened in these movies. Will Smith gave a long lap dance to several of the characters dressed as a woman. It's like three minutes long, right? Here he is with Kevin Klein. Here he is stroking the face of the president, sitting on the president's lap. Here he is wrapping a scarf around the villain. There's just, it goes on for a while. Very sexual, very odd. Like it goes on forever. Careful about the dress. I'll be out of here in just a second, Mr. President. And then here he is kissing Jaden on the mouth, something Jaden complained about on Ellen, and Ellen encouraged him to to kiss, uh, to go after Jaden and kiss him on the mouth. So these were things 
I have um, a compilation I'll show you. But it's, you know, there's all these times that Will Smith himself hints at this reality, that he was actually gay. So that story has been there for a while. But then it was confirmed for years they talked about Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith's marriage being a sham, an open marriage. And because she was with, you know, Alexis, uh, she was with um, August Asino, amongst other people. They had multiple affairs. And finally, that came to, you know, be out in the public. August Asina gave an interview and said, confirmed that they were together. And then Jada Smith had to take herself and Will Smith, for some reason, to the Red Table Talk. And they confirmed that their marriage was a sham marriage. I'm going to get you back first, and then... You're going to get me back. I think you've gotten me back. I think you... <laughs> I think we're good on that, okay? <laughs> okay, that might, that's probably true. That's you know, probably true. but, um, you know, if you expect to be with somebody for a lifetime... 25 years and counting. Mm. We ride together. We, we die, die together. together. Bad, Bad marriage, marriage for life. life. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. And so this also happened. I'm including this. So Will Smith um, decides to make a video about love. So I was thinking about um, love. I was thinking about how difficult it is for us to find and to, to maintain the love that we all yearn for. And so um, this made me th think that Will Smith never ever experienced love in his life, right? It's one of the great things about the Heartfulness Meditation is that you get love from the source, which is, you know, God is love and the divine energy that's transmitted in the system, right? It's something people crave on a fundamental level. Um, and... He said something here. He's really uncomfortable talking about it, right? And, you know, this speaks to his marriage and his life and all these other things. Love misunderstood. Now, um, when Will Smith, when this thing came out about August, August Asina, Will Smith was miserable because Jada was miserable and wouldn't he couldn't make her happy, couldn't control her happiness. She hated him and didn't want to be around him, right? Like, she would just stare at him. They talked about this in the Red Table talk. I mean, their relationship and how they just, you know, she just would look at him and just, like, hate him, right? <laughs> and this, um, like, he foreshadowed this here. So me and Jada was reflecting about love. Even the way he just said it, right? He was trying to sound like Barry White, but he sound like, you know, somebody who's never experienced love. You cannot make a person happy. You can make a person smile. You can make a person feel good. You can make a person laugh. But whether or not a person is happy is deeply and totally and utterly out of your control. The thing that we... Yeah, but you weren't making her happy. You are making her miserable. Like, she hated you, right? Call love, the thing that we're searching for and we're trying to create that we call love is actually not love. Jay Krishnamurti talked about the, the concept of the desire-pleasure paradigm, that we think about love in terms of desire and pleasure. Me and so, um, again, like he's never experienced it. Meaning that if you meet my needs, then I love you. If you don't, then I don't. So that love becomes transactional. If you... And so that's the kind of thing he's talking about. Certainly not worthy of a slap, right? <laughs> like if you think about somebody who really loves his wife and, you know, I mean, it's a sham. Their marriage is a sham. Like what would, get, what would make him get up and get that upset over a lame joke that would, you know, act in a way that would get him banned from the academy, right? When he's with somebody who, I mean, she's, you know, talked about hating him, right? What was your hardest time in our marriage? <laughs> I think... <laughs> There's just too many to mention. The turning point in our relationship for me happened 
when I turned 40. Mm -hmm. That's when I had a midlife crisis. Yeah, your 40th birthday was my low point. Jada, you know, there's that, and you can see the, the sort of simmering, like you know, mutual hatred, right? Where he is, he's healing. You know, and he's also kind of breaking down some of the construct that he's built around himself of who he is and who he's not and all of those kinds of things. So I actually Yeah, it'd be nice if he admitted who he is and who he's not, right? And that the marriage is a joke, right? Like, you know, she's <laughs> Do you think that this has been kind of him coming to the table has been kind of a release? For him to not have to live up to this, yeah, and that's certain... this illusionary marriage and this fake uh, narrative that we've created. It's work. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, exactly. That takes work. It takes, it takes work, work, and it's not easy, and it's and it can be painful. So, and I'm proud. You know, proud of him. The couple. Yeah, sure she is. And I'm proud of him. The couple's marriage as they knew it fell apart after Will threw Jada an over-the-top 40th birthday party that she says was more about him than her. Yeah, we all know that, right? <laughs> I've covered this here in recent videos. Everything that Will Smith does in these vacations or anything they do with birthday parties or even his daughter's concert is all about him, like the narcissism for this guy, right? And they're all narcissists. I mean, they named their kids after each other. Or, you know, after themselves, right? Jaden and Willow. And so the, the narcissism here, right? And um, it's not a real relationship. It's not a slap-worthy relationship, right? She's told me that the party was the most ridiculous display of my ego. Ooh. Crushed, right? And... To this day, I know I was crushed because it was true. Yeah. <laughs> it was true. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a party for her. Yeah. And this is, that was a display. I mean, so this is their marriage, right? These looks that she gives, right? That She's 50 now. So this was 10 years ago. And this is, that was a display, that moment of like me having the courage to just say no. No. Yeah. yeah. But now... I had to have the courage to unravel it and just realizing this next 40, I got to do it my way. Jada says up until that. She's got to do it her way. And so then there was the fair affair with August Cecina and all these things that came after it, right? And so Will Smith talking about love, right? Like he's given her a birthday party that's about him, is, you know, the ego and the celebrity you know, status and all these things. And everything he did was you know, so much about him. He kind of admits it, but then doesn't change, right? It's not the kind of marriage where somebody makes a, a joke about your wife having a shaved head and you go up and you snap and you slap the guy and ruin what's left of your crappy career, right? It's not, you know, it's not that kind of a relationship with it. Then a couple of days ago, I covered, um, this is Jada's, uh, you know, she talked about not knowing what love is herself, right? And um, f so first she talked about, like, really loving Tupac. And then at the red table she said she didn't know what love is and wanted to figure it out. So let's watch that. But here's Jada talking about Tupac. Um, and we hit it off. First she said Tupac wasn't a person that she would usually connect with, but once they you know, we're connected. From that moment on. He would tell me all the time, Jada, you're going to be a star. You know what I mean? I'm like, Pac, come on. He's like, you're going to be a star. You got it. You just got it. You got it, Jada. You know who's got it more is Will. <laughs> you got a little bit. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> he was, uh... This is after her and Will have been married for a number of years. I mean, it was beyond friendship for us, you know, as far as just... Uh, it was really difficult to explain because the type of relationship we had 
You only get that once in a lifetime, so. <laughs> you get that once in a lifetime. So she's married to Will Smith, and this is what she's saying, right? Oh, he was like a brother, father figure to me. Very protective and. You know, he might slap some guy who didn't. <laughs> And so the problem with this is, well, and I don't want to go too far into this aspect of it. Tupac is very effeminate. When you see him here, this is the time when he knew Jada, where they went to the same school together. He took ballet. You know, he wasn't some hardened gangster. He was, you know, I guess was this uh, some Baltimore school. Um, and he is um, very effeminate. So there was a, a time that Jesse Smollett called himself the gay Tupac. And somebody left a comment in my video with this clip, with this link to this video saying Tupac was the gay Tupac, right? And Tupac was very effeminate and, you know, not the tough gangster rapper that he later became, right? And this, I ain't teaching that. We really learn it. Look at, look at unsafe sex and drugs. And you could tell, if you look at the statistics, they were, they're staggering again, you know? And so I think they're scared because they're realizing that they, goofed they really messed up and um also the they fear te teenagers are angry at least this generation seems a little angrier to me and a little bit more rebellious and uninvolved so they're scared because they're realizing that you know well 18 will bring lots of responsibilities that i don't want but it'll bring respect that i feel like that's the only way i can get it you know i try to be as mature as i can be and demand it wherever I can get it. But 18 is like, you're an adult. You, you, like today, when I had to sign the release form, I felt so bad because I couldn't sign it myself. I had to go and get my mother's and all that. But um, 18 is... So he's much different here than when he was a gangster rapper. Right? <laughs> like his presentation and the way he's acting, this is his more, more natural state. So here he is in one of these um, old pictures. There's a few of these pictures out there that raises some questions about his authenticity, similar to Will Smith, which I've covered in other videos. And Jada herself doesn't know what love is, right? So this is from the Red Table Talk. We have a bucket list. I really want to learn how to love, but I know what it isn't. Yeah. You know, and... She knows what love isn't, you know, her marriage, right? I and mean, I showed you a lot of this yesterday. And... um. You know, these will go into the compilation. But <laughs> she knows what love isn't, right? <laughs> you know, their marriage was a sham. They had an open marriage and, you know, I mean, it wasn't a love relationship. Will threw her a 40th birthday party was, was for him and she got mad at him because he had to be the center of attention, all of these things, right? I'm just on the journey of really understanding what love is. Yeah. So everything on your bucket list right now is just part of your spiritual journey and yeah. your path. You know, you're not on a spiritual journey if you don't know what love is, right? So the next piece is, um, I made this today, so I'm just going to throw this in there. This is more about Jada and Tupac dancing, right? So this Jada Pinkett Smith, and, you know, like she's had some plastic surgery. Her face doesn't look like that now, right? Her nose is different. Um but this happened. You guys sort of dream together. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Well, we have <laughs> as a treat. The it's that dude. He used to be famous. First performance of, of the duo of Tupac and Jada. <laughs> singing, singing, very ironically. <laughs> Parents just don't understand. Check this out. <laughs> You can see the way he's moving here. Not nah, he just doesn't move like a gangster rapper. She's doing her little thing. They're doing their dance together. And they're rapping to Will Smith's parents just don't understand. Look at him go. <laughs> Gives you a better uh, understanding of the character that Tupac would later create as a gangster rapper, right? The, you know. The actor that, you know, the creation of Tupac from this actor, right? And then, you know, Jada back then. And then they're doing their thing. <laughs> I 
Her head's basically shaved then. There's been a variety of times she's had her head shaved. Her daughter has her head shaved now. It's a look that she's worn over the years, right? And so, um, you know, any sort of controversy from that is silly, right? But, of course, we know that thing's fake. By that thing, I mean um, the Will Smith slap. <laughs> you know, if someone's watching this years from now. <laughs> because at some point everyone's going to forget about it, or mostly. Um, so that's all the fake stuff. I'm not going to include the the slap videos here because, you know, those are um, just a part of this thing, and I've covered that recently. But Will Smith slapped um, Chris Rock, and there's so much evidence that it's fake. And then there's this one more clip here. This is Will Smith talking about math. You're in a universe, and 2 plus 2 equals 4. Mm -hmm. 2 plus 2 only equals 4 if you accept that 2 plus 2 equals 4. 2 plus 2 is going to be what I want it to be. Mm -hmm. You know? No, we don't know, Will, you know, because math, right? <laughs> That's my standard joke for that clip. I don't know how many times I've made that joke, but it's more than three. More than four. <laughs> um, the other joke would be, this is uh, Will Smith, the inventor of Common Core Math. <laughs> But anyways, you know, math is something that can have a right answer because a lot of stuff is just subjective, like history. And, you know, language is language, English, whatever. But in terms of just things being factual, math is like the most, right? It's the, the only thing that's, you know, finite and the numbers add up. And, you know, there's two plus two equals four. If you have two things and other two things, and you put those two things and two things together, you get four things. If Jada has two apples and Will has two apples and they put their apples together, they have four apples, right? <laughs> and so, you know, it's math, Will. But this is probably a lot of his problem because he thinks it's something that you can make four plus, uh, you'd make two plus two be, ever, be whatever you want it to be. But anyways, Will Smith has been a fraud. He's admitted to it very recently in that trailer from uh, where he's losing the weight. And he said that he's a he's been a carefully constructed constructed you know brand and illusion, and it's something that all these people are. I mean, everybody is to some extent, and Will Smith is one of the worst. And so this fraudulent everything he does is fake. His laugh is fake, his act is fake. He's very domineering and controlling. I've talked about that in a, some of these other videos, right? He's very you know handsy and forceful with his kids and his. Um, you know, he just is domineering. He tries to be a nice, he's a nice guy when the cameras are rolling, but he's very controlling and, um, just a sucky person, right? All, all across the board. And he's like, what I said, he's got the nice guy moniker that he's got to live up to. Of course, now that's been ripped to shreds after the Academy Awards debacle, but also he's got the desperation, the Madam Desperation date, right? Madam Expiration date, Madonna's need for relevancy and to get fed by the crowd and you know to keep on um you know retain what you had when you were younger in terms of your popularity and your stardom and so he's a desperate psychologically messed up dude and you know he's probably going to come out of this thing kind of uh, broken because i think he already was uh that's it you know i think there's more things from other videos but this is enough here <laughs> Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely reporting from the Apocalypse and the Ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.